Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the 2025 BMW M240i and the 2025 BMW M2. I've borrowed both of these from Hendrick BMW Charlotte. Take a look at their website. That link is down in the description below. We have two very popular BMW coupes that have a lot to offer. They do have a huge price difference, but depending on how you spec them, they can also be very similar as well. The M240 behind us has an MSRP just over at 57,000 and the M2 is just over at 68,000. So again, we do have a bit, pretty big price discrepancy, but a base M2 or a fully loaded M240 can be very similar in price. And then to start off with what powers both of these, the M240 has the three liter twin power turbo inline six. It is only paired to the eight speed ZF automatic and it pumps out 382 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque. For the M2, it has the 3 liter twin power turbo inline six, paired to either the six speed manual or the eight speed ZF. For the 25 year model, for the manual, this has 473 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. So significantly more than the 240. Now the 240 is available in both rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. The M2 is only available in rear wheel drive. And zero to 60 times, just over four seconds for the 240, closer to three and a half for the M2. The M2 also has a higher top speed at 177 miles versus 155 for the 240. And then as far as fuel economy goes, you're looking around 16 miles per gallon in the city, 24 on the highway for the M2, and then 23 and 32 for the 240. So a little bit more economic with the 240, but you get a lot more power out of that M2. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling, you'll notice for the 25, 240, the M badge is down in that lower section. Lots of glass black for this model, even a dark set of housings there for the LEDs. There's also parking sensors for this model. There's several options that you can get, which won't be shown in today's video, but you have a lot of options that you can go with. If you take a look now at the M2, you'll notice that the headlight design is very similar. However, you have this section right here on the M2 that is not over on the 240. A little bit different of a design, but still retaining that dark housing. We have a lot more squared off edges for the M2. With that kidney grill, the M2 badge is up top, and then a lot of gloss blacking parking sensors in that lower section, and the hood lines are relatively the same. So which one do you like better? I kind of like the lower section of the M2 better. A little bit more subtle though on the 240. So as we work our way to the side, for these particular models, we have the M Sport brakes on both. Now you can get a few different colors. They are red on this 240 with a really nice wheel, and then they're blue on the M2, again, with a really nice wheel. Solid color there versus the two-tone, but again, those are options depending on what you would like. For the M2, there's the two-tone design with the turn signal there, and then we have a solid mirror with the turn signal for the 240. Now there's a sunroof for both of these models, which is an option. And then as we take a look at the side design, hopefully you can tell with the M2, it has that boxy side design to it, especially with that lower side skirt, how that pokes out slightly. And then we have some lines in that rear fender there, where over on the M2 or the 240, you still get that line there, but the bulges in the back aren't quite the same as the M2. There's a different line that runs down the back too. So nearly identical, but we have a little bit more squared off shape for the M2. And then in back, this model has a gloss black spoiler, the dark housings, there's the backup camera with the sensors, and then that dual exhaust. Now you can get remote start for both of these if you get the automatic for the M2. You won't have that with the manual. But let's take a look at the trunk space now. For this 240, you have a good bit of space, and the back seats also fold down too. So you can just pull on those tabs there to get a lot more interior space. So these are nearly going to be identical as far as the cargo space goes. But you'll notice for the M2, we have a body color spoiler for this model, same dark housings, but a much different rear bumper with that quad tip dual exhaust, some more angular looks to it, all the sensors and the camera system too. And then real quick, looking at this, it's pretty much the exact same as what you just saw with being able to fold down those back seats as well. Now I have full detailed reviews 
on both of these exact BMWs in today's video. So if you wanna see these in greater details, take a look at those separate videos. I'm going to go through this a little bit quickly since I have those videos to view. For the door panel on this, we get the Harman Kardon, you have the window control, side mirror adjustments, trunk release, memory seats. It's a really nice door panel and then a very nice set of seats with all of these stitching here. Now for the M240, you have to reach around the back in order to grab that handle and then the seat is going to work its way forward. Now you're not really buying either of these to be a full four seater, but in the 240, you get some air vents in the middle, you get a little bit of space here. You have a decent amount of leg room and at he and my headroom here, I am touching the headliner. So I could ride around town, it's not really where you wanna be, but you have the armrest, you have large windows here. You even have for the 240, if we rotate back around, we have the armrest along with cup holders. And then you can even fold down this middle seat individually. If you have some items, maybe you want a higher armrest and you have someone in the back. So it's really not all that bad. It's mainly for the extra storage space, but you have those extra seats if and when you need to use them. So it just adds to the practicality of a two-door sports car. Now for the M2, a little bit different of a design. We have the same audio, basically all of the same controls here with a little bit different of a graphic there. And then you have some different seat options that you can go with for the M2. So this is the current setup for this particular model. Automatic adjustments, manual control for the leg support are all the same. Now in the back of the M2, you pretty much have the same thing. We're looking at the same thing here. Headroom is going to be the same, as you can hopefully tell. We have the armrest, the window. The only difference is there's no cup holders in the middle, but you can still fold down the seat. So it's interesting that that is deleted and you get that in the M2 or the M240. But let's work our way to the front now where we hop in the M2. We have the flat bottom design for the steering wheel. You get M1 and M2 cruise control settings. You get a few other controls on the right side there. Like I said, you can get the automatic. We have the manual transmission for this option here. And then you have some content that you can scroll through within the gauge cluster here. So if you push on this button over on the right side, you can scroll through all of this, which is nice. Not a whole lot of info, but you have some performance oriented information that you can look at. You can also change the gauge cluster to where now you have more performance oriented info on both sides. This particular model does not have a head up display, so you only have all that information there. You get headlight adjustments, one air vent, and then the infotainment systems are going to be pretty much the same. So again, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, check out the full reviews if you wanna see diving into this system a little bit more. But you have quite a lot to go through. You have the camera system as well with the sensors there. And then no wireless charging for this model. I believe that's an option. You have some storage there. You have controls to go over that infotainment system as well. You also have these setup controls. So this is going to be the biggest difference between both of these BMWs is the fact that you have all of this to go through between Comfort and Sport Plus. So you have those shortcuts depending on how you would like to drive the vehicle. You also have an exhaust note button as well. And then you get a little bit of storage with auxiliaries, a little bit of storage in the glove box there, garage door buttons, and then we have the manual or the automatic adjustments for the sunshade. And then here's a look at visibility over both shoulders. So you can clearly see over the left and the right there. And then as we hop out to go to the 240 now, comment down below, which BMW are you liking so far? We have that same design for the steering wheel, which is new for the 25 year model. And like I mentioned earlier, you only have the eight speed automatic. Now, again, we have a similar steering wheel we have a little bit different materials, but cruise control settings, paddle shifters, no M1 or M2, like I mentioned, but you also have a lot more to go through in the gauge cluster. So not only do you have this content that you can scroll through, just like you saw over on the M2, but you also have a layout here to adjust and then the head up display. And again, some of these are options that the M2 currently does not have since that is closer to the base MSRP. So some of these are going to look similar if you spec them on that exact vehicle. But we have the same controls on that left side 
and then the same screen. So I'm not going to go through any of this. We'll just show the backup camera looks exactly the same there, but everything else is the same as far as the controls. You're lacking the M Sport or the drift analyzer and some lap timers and things like that, uh, but you still get a good bit of info. This model has the heated seats, heated steering wheel as well. And then carbon fiber is one of the options that you can go with. There's a few other options, but you get wireless charging for this, as well as the rest of it being the same there. We have traction control, all of these settings. You, get it, you do get a few different driving modes. So at least you can have a little bit of throttle response differences there. And then it's going to be the same here, as well as the glove box too. And then up top, garage door buttons, and then the same identical controls for the sunroof and sunshade. And then visibility, nearly identical, just because it's pretty much the exact same vehicle. So there's a rundown between the exteriors and interiors for both the BMW M2 as well as the BMW M240i. So let's get both of these BMW coupes out on the road and see how they compare. So we'll start off behind the wheel for the manual M2. Now this is going to be a quick test drive, but you can check out even taking the M2 to the mountains to really experience the performance, the handling characteristics. This is such a phenomenal vehicle. So we've had a lot of miles put on the M2 in general. So we have all of that content that you can check out. But the M2 is a very performance oriented vehicle. There's a lot of modifications that you can do to this. A lot of M2 owners are modding these, getting a little bit more power out of them. And you just have a very fun performance oriented vehicle for the price. It's a really good option to go with, especially with the practicality that you get, having the back seats, having a little bit more storage. The nine hour road trip that I took in a manual M2, we had plenty of space for two people, folding the back seats down, putting in everything, road tripping with it, you know, a lot of highway driving, but it was so smooth and comfortable. And then at the same time, you can push on a few buttons here and set it up for mountain driving, you can get that exhaust to be a little bit louder. It is a phenomenal all around vehicle if you are looking for just one car. Now the manual I will say is a little bit funky to drive. I don't wanna use the word rubbery, but when you compare it to the manual Toyota Supra, which a lot of people either upgrade or switch to, just depending on what you have, if you need a little bit larger of a vehicle, you go with this, uh, but it's a much different shifter than that BMW. Uh, not to say it's bad, clutch paddle is super light. Uh, it's definitely easy to drive, uh, but it, it does feel a little bit different. It's not quite as engaging as I know a lot of people were hoping for. Uh, so it's it still gives you that performance, but just a little bit different. Uh, it's, it doesn't take away from the fun, just something to point out. Uh, so it's a super fun vehicle to drive. I would highly recommend one. And again, check out driving this through the mountains because it it is just so much fun to drive and experience. It would make for a great daily. But let's go ahead and hop into the 240. And behind the wheel now for the 240i, another quick test drive here. So take a look at the full reviews. But if you are new to the channel or you haven't seen, I actually had a 240 on order. My wife and I decided to cancel that and get an X5 instead. But now that I've been driving these back to back, the numerous miles I've put on both of these cars over the years, I think an M2 would actually be a better bet. So I'm kind of glad that I canceled the 240, but I have nothing bad to say about the car. Personally, I would want the M2 just for that extra performance and everything that I enjoy but the 240 is definitely a great vehicle. This was going to be something that, very similar to the Toyota Supra in the sense that it shares a lot of the same characteristics, sort of, the modding potential and things like that. Uh, so it's definitely a fun car. It's just much more toned down than the M2. And as we talk about the Supra, we have a very nice Supra right there. But it's a nice vehicle. It's just, if you want that luxury coupe, you're not looking for quite that much more power, you can still get a fun performance oriented vehicle. I mean, it's it's still a quick vehicle, zero to 60 time, four seconds, very respectable for this kind of vehicle. So you still get performance, just not quite as much, a little bit more comfortable of a daily driving vehicle, having a different suspension setup, but you get essentially the same car just underneath the skin is, is different 
by a good bit, especially with that price increase. But it's a good option to go with. You only get the automatic. So if you want the manual, it kind of forces you into the M2. But nonetheless, it is a very fun vehicle to drive. So back from our test drive now with the M2 and the M240i. I know that was a quick test drive. Again, I have full detailed reviews on both of these as well as a lot more driving impressions. We've actually been able to have an M2 and an M240i for a week. So check out those videos with our impressions of what it's like. I actually went on a nine hour road trip with, the, with a manual M2 and it was a very fun road vehicle going nine hours, even with a manual, it was fine. Very nice vehicle to drive. Same with the 240, which I actually had on order. I ended up canceling that and going with an X5, but the M240i is definitely a great sports car to go with as well. So it really just boils down to, do you want the manual transmission? Do you want a lot more power? Or do you want a very nice handling BMW without that manual and you still get a similar vehicle, just not as expensive, not as performance oriented? Both are going to be great daily drivers. If you're doing a lot more mountain driving or track driving, you want that manual, you can still do that with the 240 as well. So it really just boils down to which one are you going to take, power or a little bit less power and only the automatic. They are so close, very different in pricing but and handling as well, but they are so close. It just really depends on if you want that manual and a little bit more power. But that's going to wrap it up for both of these BMW coupes. Once again, huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Charlotte for providing this for me today. Take a look at their website, give this video a huge thumbs up, consider smashing that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.